Um, I, I never have a, I don't have a proper way to start an intro. So. Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> AKA the trailer that is not my bedroom. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. I hope you're all having a good day. Today I am doing something a little bit different. Something that I kind of do, but not very often, is write my own stories. I don't do them often because I'm not the best writer. <laughs> I made the story in my senior year of high school, which it required a lot of tweaking, which is why I brought my fantastic writer friend, Feely. You may have Hello. seen her. <laughs> you may have seen her in some of my videos. And I also I got her to record the story itself. So this is pretty much just going to be a speed paint to a story that I wrote and well a couple of speed paints and i hope you guys enjoy it and stick to the end for bloopers <laughs> and the stupid chicken that won't shut up <laughs> good luck everybody i hope you guys enjoyed the ghost story marie's sanctuary i park my car and head to work in the apple orchard i've been working for this farm for a year now it was built back in the 1880s but it is now mainly used for tourism my job is basically helping out around the farm whether being in the fields one day to being with the animals the next, as well as helping out with school field trips here during the spring. It's currently been extra busy since it's autumn, which is our most active time of year, since the apples are ripe and the pumpkins have grown. After a long day, when the end of my shift was near, one of my fellow employees, Matthew, called out to me. Ryan, I left a wheelbarrow in one of the patches of trees near the parking lot. Before you go, can you bring it back here? As I made my way around the random patches of apple trees, I thought I heard someone. Someone crying. I followed the sound into one of the patches to find a young, dainty woman on her knees, crying into her hands. She wore an old-fashioned skirt and top, kind of like some of our employees, but she didn't seem familiar. I got a little closer to her. Hey, are you okay? She then looked up at me, allowing me to see her face. She had light reddish-brown hair that looked almost pink when the sun hit it. All her hair was up in a braided bun with some hair framing the sides of her face. She had these deep green eyes that had some irritation around them, as well as rosy cheeks and lips that sat in a frown across her face. Minus her irritated eyes, she had very porcelain skin that was quite fair. Do you need anything? I questioned. She looked down, then spoke in a shuddering voice, but yet still clear to understand. Since the third bell had rung, my young life had gone. The blood spilt can't be restored, but my remains work can be put forward. I had a funny look in my eye. What she was saying gave me an unsettling, heart-rendering feeling. But before I could ask what she meant, my ears were distracted by the sound of barking. I looked to see the farm's dog chasing something. Once I faced forward, I stumbled back a bit in shock. She was gone, yet the unsettling feeling was still there. She was nowhere to be seen. I scratched at my head, making my black hair messier than it already was. I then noticed the wheelbarrow, remembering why I came out here in the first place. I grabbed the wheelbarrow and brought it back with the rest of them. When I left the area, I didn't have that unsettling feeling anymore. Curious whether anyone knew that girl, I went back to where Matthew and two others, Christina and Alina, were working. Hey, did you find the wheelbarrow? Yeah, um, do you guys know if we have a new employee? A girl with light reddish brown hair and green eyes. Everyone shook their heads, responding negatively to my question. What makes you think that? asked Christina. There was a girl out by a tree dressed in uniform who I've never seen before. Huh. Weird, replied Matthew. And you just left her there? questioned Alina. I turned my head away for a second, then she disappeared. Alina gives me a confused look. Are you sure she didn't just run off? She was practically right next to me, and she was sitting on the ground. That's a little disturbing, responds Matthew. Are you sure you weren't seeing things? disputed Alina. Why don't you believe what he has to say? Christina snapped. It's not that I don't believe what he has to say. I ignore everything they are saying and leave. When walking past that same patch of trees, making my way to my car, I feel the same heart-rending feeling again. It's like some sort of aura in that area. I can't put my finger on it. That night, I didn't get much sleep. I spent a lot of the night trying to wrap my head around what happened. Luckily, I did eventually drift off to sleep, and in the morning, I didn't think much of it. I got ready and drove off to work.
I parked my car and started to make my way to the barn. Before I made it very far, I began to hear crying again. The same crying from yesterday, coming from the same area as before. I wasn't completely sure what to do. I didn't expect to hear it again. Most certainly not now. I went over to where the sound was, and in the exact same place, I saw the same girl. I approached her and asked, What are you doing here? I soon realized there were bruises, scratches, and marks on her arms. She looked up at me, showing her face, scratched up, bleeding, and beaten. Gasping, I went down to knee level. What happened to you? I held one of her arms, examining it. Her arm felt soft and faint, almost like it wasn't there, but was still very real. I looked directly at her, but her head hung low. She didn't answer my question. All she said in her shaking voice was, Since the third bell had rung, my young life had gone, and the blood spilt can't be restored, but my remains' work can be put forward. What are you talking about? Again, she didn't respond. She just looked directly at me with a sorrowful look that sent shivers down my spine. Then, in a blink of an eye, she was gone. Once she disappeared, the same unsettling, heart-rending feeling returned. I checked the whole area to see if she was near, but I had no luck in finding her. I started over to the barn, where once again the feeling left as soon as it came. I struggled to get my work done. My mind couldn't fathom what was happening. Once my break came, I hung out with Matthew and Christina since their breaks lined up with mine. Matthew turned to me. I don't mean to be rude, Ryan, but you seem to be moving a bit slower today. I gave him a vile look. He leaned back, putting his hands up. Hey, I'm just saying, you're usually a working machine. I looked down. I have some things on my mind. Is everything okay? asked Christina. I ignore her question. What would you call a person who can disappear and is nowhere to be found? A wizard, Matthew joked. I rolled my eyes. Christina paused for a second. A ghost? The concept of a ghost never really occurred to me. Do you believe in ghosts? I ask. I believe some spirits can interact beyond the veil. Wait, does this have to do with that girl you saw yesterday? Asked Matthew. Wow, you finally put that together, I responded sarcastically. Huh, you don't actually think it's a ghost. Why do you say that? Do you not believe in ghosts? Asked Christina. It just doesn't seem realistic. And a wizard does? Christina remarked dryly. I think Alina had the right idea of you seeing things, replied Matthew. I thought for a moment. I guess I have been lacking in sleep. See? That's reasonable. I knew that wasn't the case since my lack of sleep started when I first saw her, but I wasn't sure about the ghost ordeal either. I finished up work, went home, and once more had a night of little sleep. Even when I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about it. At this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to work. When the morning finally came, I kind of felt anxious about going, but nevertheless, I got ready and made my way to work. I parked my car away from where I usually park and made my way to the main apple orchard. The day went on. I tried not to fill my mind with what I've seen, which was an absolute fail. Somewhere near the end of the day, Matthew and I walked through the random patches of apple trees. That is, when I stopped dead in my tracks. There it was again, that same weeping. Uh, Ryan, are you okay? Asked Matthew. Do you not hear that? Hear what? I began to feel my heart racing. I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue towards the weeping or sprint away. For some reason, I continued expediently to the same area as if I had no choice but to go. Matthew picked up his pace, trying to keep up. Wait, what's the hurry? I, once more, see the same young woman there, with her arms around her waist and face in her knees, sobbing. When I got closer, she looked up, causing me to jump back in fear. Her face had a huge gash on her right cheek, along with her left eye gone, exposing flesh behind it. Her clothes were thrashed. Her right forearm and left calf had rashes and exposed muscle. I froze in complete shock. She then said the exact same words from before, with her voice shaking more. Then, just as it began, she faded away. Not only leaving me that unsettling and heart-rending feeling, but in complete and utter horror. My mind was racing as I felt my body tremble. Ryan, are you okay? You, you look as if you've faced death. Matthew looked concerned. You mean you didn't? I paused myself. I began to realize how insane I sounded. 
My mind went ballistic. I ran off, away from Matthew and from there to another patch of trees. I ran my hands through my hair. I was terrified. I was terrified of what I was seeing. I was terrified I was losing my mind. What the heck, man? Matthew runs up. I gotta go. What? Why? You can't just... I didn't care what he had to say. I started to head to the parking lot till a different voice shouted, Ryan, wait! I turned to see Christina rushing over, trying not to trip over her skirt. Ryan, I found something you'd want to see. What is it? She didn't answer. She just motioned for me to follow. She led me to the main house and took me to the room where we kept a lot of the things that showed the history of the farm. She carefully got old, frail papers and placed them on the desk. This is an old documentary on the people who first owned the farm. Take a look at the owners. I analyzed the photo. There was the owner with his wife, a son, and two daughters. My eyes widened when I saw that one of the daughters was the young woman I'd been seeing. Pointing to the now familiar face, Christina asked, Is that the girl? How... how did you know? Her name is Marie Ann Richardson. I didn't think much of it till today. When I found this document, it mentioned her having the same features you described. My auburn hair and green eyes. I kept staring at the photo, looking at her smiling face. And if you're still wondering if this is a ghost situation, Christina pulled out an old newspaper and handed it to me. At age 17, her and her sister were murdered by an investor who went insane. Her sister was killed in her room, but for Marie, her body was never found. I inspected the text where it talked about when they were taking the man into custody. He kept repeating the same phrase. Since the third bell had rung, her young life had gone. The blood spilt can't be restored, but her remains work can be put forward. She said the exact same thing when I saw her. What does it even mean? I frantically scour the paper, trying to find something, anything to help me understand what is happening. Christina smacks the top of my head before taking the paper away. Careful with that! It's already near falling apart! She places it down on the desk and reviews it. It sounds like a riddle. I'd say she's trying to reach out for help, and the answer is where her body is. I pondered for a second. The only bell I know of is the bell at the front of the farm. There's no way that's where her body is. If so, they would have found her by now. Well, what other bell is there? I don't know. Christina thought for a moment. Well, back when the farm was first built, there was a building way out on the outer hills. That trail we don't use leads right to it, but it caught fire before it was of any use. There could have maybe been a bell up there. I thought for a moment. It's the only other place where a bell could have been. What are you two doing? We turn and see Alina entering. Your job is out there! What are you two wasting your time on? I quickly jumped up and headed out. After work, I got a lantern and used what little sunlight I had to make my way through the half-broken trail. You could even call it that now. Once I got there, there was no more sunlight but the slightest bit coming from the half-moon and my lantern. I almost couldn't believe what I was doing. This whole thing sounded kind of stupid to me, and yet, here I am. I eventually found what was left of the building. All that stood was rocks that stacked, making an outline of the foundation. My foot then kicked something, causing a clank noise. It was an old, rusty bell. My heart rate started to speed up. I stepped over the rocks and shined my light around the area. I found bones. Bones spread out all over the place. An arm in one corner, a calf in the other, looking down to find a ribcage and a skull half buried in the ground. My breathing became a lot heavier, as if a weight was put on my chest, and when I lifted my head up, there stood a rotting corpse right in front of me. I screamed, falling back onto the ground, dropping my lantern. There stood Marie, now missing an arm and leg, with her remaining limbs being nothing but bone. She had an empty eye sockets, and the gash on her face was now bigger and rotting, showing her skull, along with wisps of what hair was left. Her skin was cracking and rotting away, with moss growing from her mouth. My heart was now pounding through my chest, moving rapidly. I wanted to run, but my body was frozen in place. I nearly threw up when seeing the maggots on her face, and some centipede crawling out of one of her eye sockets to the other. She falls down to her knee, with her head facing her remains. Her mouth stays shut, 
but I still hear the words. Since the third bell had rung, my young life had gone. The blood spilled can't be restored, but my remains work can be put forward. Once I gained control over my body, I jumped to my feet, grabbing the lantern, and sprinted out of there as fast as my legs could take me. I went straight to my car, panting like a dog the moment I sat in the front seat. I went home, planning on how I'll tell Christina what happened, and to see what should be done from there. Before I even made it home, I knew I wasn't going to get any sleep that night. Once the morning came, I went to work, and immediately went to Christina, and told her what I saw. She said how the riddle referred to Marie's remains work needing to be done, which probably is saying she needs a proper burial. Christina grabbed the old newspaper and documentary and went over to our boss, who is a direct descendant of the original owner of the farm. Christina showed him the news article, while I told him what I saw at the burnt-down building, even if it would lead me into trouble. I, of course, left out the fact that I saw her ghost. Our boss, at first, wasn't happy with us, but he was curious about what I saw at the burnt building, so we went up to the building in his truck. After he saw the bell and the remaining bones combined with the newspaper, he decided to have some people investigate it. After looking more into it, it was confirmed that the bones were indeed of Marie Richardson. Her remains were given a proper burial on the farm with the rest of her family. After a couple of days, I returned to the farm. I didn't notice much till I passed by the patch of apple trees, or I heard no crying, but humming. At the same tree where Marie weeped, she was now humming an old tune while dancing and twirling around, with such cheerful eyes that looked as if they had never shed a single tear, and a smile that would bring the most sorrowful soul's joy. She paused, facing towards me, and then gave me a delightful smile. She ran up to me, putting her face right in front of mine, causing me to slightly step back. She continued to stare at me, smiling for a moment, leaving me dumbfounded. She then looks back as if she was looking at someone. She looks back to me, bringing her face to my ear, and whispers in the most gentle, loving voice, Thank you. Then, catching me off guard, she pressed her lips against my cheek. She gave a small laugh from my reaction, then went over to the tree she was at earlier. She stepped halfway behind it, then waved goodbye to me. I managed to wave back to which she smiled with a bit of rosiness in her cheeks. She then stepped completely behind the tree, disappearing, with a couple of leaves falling, as if the wind blew by. Previous times, I'd had an unsettling, heart-rending feeling here, but now it's been replaced with a peaceful, lively feeling. I then looked around the tree. I wonder, why is she always at this tree? Inspecting the tree carefully, I found where words had been carved into a branch that wrote, Marie's Sanctuary. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have an interesting day. Yeah, um, do you guys know if we have a new girl? There is, there is still another one. Can we just jump back a little? Okay, yep, I know. Okay. Okay. 
She faded away. Not. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Stop! You didn't uh. use every usable space, and you're making it worse. Okay. Then, just as it began, she faded away. Not only leaving me that unsettling and heart-rending feeling. Not I only. Sh I'm trying to do this. I see you start. Previously, you start at the dot. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, are you gonna are you gonna crow again or no? He's like, I'm only gonna crow when you start. <laughs> Good to know. Not only leaving me that unsettling and heartrending feeling, but incomplete. <laughs> Why are you so right, Amber? Okay. I stepped over the rocks and shined my light around the area. No, like, no, that part was fine. I know! I just have to get into the character, Lady! Like, <laughs> I'll pause so that he didn't have the part. Don't apologize! Don't apologize! I take it all back! Okay, thank you! <laughs> A rotting corpse right in front of me. Make it really fast. Just make it fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out because it's not it's not quite vibrato. It's not vibrato. Uh, but that's kind of close. <laughs> Even caught the vibrato on the recording. That's amazing. I love that.